Time now for your forecast first. WRBL News 3 First Alert Weather. Time to go outside to Jordan Hare Stadium. Look at a 68 degrees here. We had a couple low 70s. Temperatures warming up even over Mock Georgia. Buffalo Simon coming in with readings today that we're almost in the mid 80s again. So what's going on here? A very strong high pressure air, air mass, 30.12 inches. When you start seeing it that high, it's pretty fair and dry. And all the clouds that come in here can't muster up any rain. We're watching the system though off to the west is gonna finally break down and come into this area in the southeast. That means the high pressure ridge will start the weekend. And there could be some strong gusty winds farther south, but this will not be anything like we've seen from the last two storm systems. That's what we're gonna talk about. You're watching WRBL News 3 on your side. Professional hockey one step closer to returning to Columbus. How tonight's city council vote paves the way for a new team at the Civic Center. Plus, a student in East Alabama gets tased at school by a resource officer. And police say the tasering was justified. On your side, this is News 3 Night Watch. Good evening, everyone. We thank you for trusting News 3. I'm Phil Scoggins. And I'm Teresa Whitaker. Columbus folks will be happy to hear that hockey is coming back to the Fountain City. Tonight, Columbus City Council approved the request to bring the sport back to the Civic Center for at least five years. News 3 Shakira Speaks spoke to the Civic Center director about what this means for the city. She joined us. Phil, Teresa, let's get a team. Let's get a schedule. Let's get on ice. That was the reaction from the Civic Center director, John Dorman, to the owner of Ignite Pro Hockey. After the city of Columbus agreed to a five-year lease agreement at Tuesday's council meeting, Dorman says the financial impact will have uh, will, the financial impact that it will have on the city will be tremendous, but the entertainment impact on the folks of Columbus will be even greater. Evansville, full Columbus hockey is coming back. During Tuesday's City Council meeting, Mayor Skip Henderson and the City Council voted unanimously to bring the sport back to the Civic Center. Civic Center's director, John Dorman, says he's excited to add to the center schedule. We are we're thrilled beyond belief to have another hockey team back in the building. Dorman says he wasn't just fighting for the sport to come back, but also for his employees. Uh, it's, it's more than just the excitement of the games and the, the team to rally around for the city, which is always fun. But more importantly, to me personally, it's about additional dates on the calendar for our part-time staff. Dorman says the extra dates will be a financial boost for his workers as well as the city. He says whatever hockey team comes to town will bring a substantial amount of money with them. Out of the 30 home games throughout the season, we estimate the, the net P&L to be somewhere between a positive $75,000 to $95,000 to the bottom line of our operating fund. With the estimates done and the agreement finally signed, Dorman says now they wait. For a schedule, we're waiting for a team. The Federal Hockey League, which which we're going to be a part of, uh, they were kind of holding up everything until this lease got approved. His first words after the approval? I said, let's get a team, let's get a schedule, let's get on the ice. Dorman says the center had multiple offers to get hop hockey back in the Fountain City, but they couldn't get over a few obstacles. Columbus hasn't seen a hockey team since the Columbus Cotton Mouths in 2017 when the team suspended operations after they couldn't find a new owner. The agreement takes effect on May 1st. Teresa. All right, thank you, Shakira. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation is searching for a missing child. The GBI issued a missing alert for this child, seven-month-old Sarah J. Grossman. The baby was last seen earlier this evening in Athens, Georgia, in the Scandia Circle area. She has light brown hair and blue eyes. At the time, she was wearing a pink dress with strawberries and stripes. Officials say the baby may be with 26-year-old Stephen J. Grossman. He is right here, six foot one, weighs between 180 and 200 pounds. If you have seen either of these people, please call 911. 
The Union Springs Police Department in Bullock County is defending the actions of their school resource officer after video of the officer using a taser on a student went viral on social media. News 3 spoke with a student, 18-year-old Jamar McKinnis. He says yesterday that he was waiting on the bus to take him to vocational school when the officer told him to get to class. McKinnis says that he was walking toward the bus stop when the officer then told him to go to the office and started following him. McKinnis says when he asked the officer, why are you following me, the officer got aggressive. Then she, she grabbed me right here, and I had her move back from her, and she grabbed me again, I just snatched me from her, and then she pulled the taser, I punched in my head, and then she backed up and shot me in my leg with it. McKinnis's parents tell News 3 their son is a good student who's never been in trouble. They say the video shows their son staying calm and trying to walk away. Union Springs Police Chief Danny Jackson disagreed in a statement saying the student was disorderly and began to use profanity towards the officer and aggressively push the officer. Jackson says the resource officer was justified in her actions. Unfortunately, whoever filmed the incident missed the initial contact between the officer and the student. That incident remains under investigation. Well, there have been four pedestrian fatalities on Columbus streets this year. Now police are putting those who cross the streets unlawfully on alert, especially in the downtown area. Police say they noticed just how many people were jaywalking when they were investigating the tragic death of W.D. Feeney. The CSU employee was hit by a dump truck while in a crosswalk on April 4th. The investigation concluded that Feeney had been hit after he wheeled out in front of the dump truck when a traffic light turned green. And that was a clear indicator to us that we need to do something about that. They, they just become comfortable with clearing the roads and then just crossing without considering that there are uh, signals and lights to regulate that for their own safety. If you are caught jaywalking, the fine is more than $200. For more on this story, you can visit WRBL.com. And coming up right here on the Night Watch. An organization is working to keep folks safe while they are enjoying the local waters. So the next system is just kind of churning out here across Texas, and eventually it's going to make its way eastward. That's what we're going to highlight. But until then, high pressure still has control over the weather. Occasional high clouds, what we're seeing now, and temperatures still remain warm. I think we're going to be done with the uh, cold weather for some time. That's all coming up in your seven-day forecast.